The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. WNDS Sports and Tri-State Megabucks present Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Oh, look at this. Look at this! He's got it! Ready for a spare! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Hawaii Camp Toyota Dodge Nissan. Looks good. Looks good. That's good to go. It's a blue. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We're at the Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. So glad to have you with us. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. And we begin our uh, final regular series of the season, Dan. We look for one more qualifier to the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. we got such a big crowd. I think they think today is the Tournament <laughs> of Champions. There's a huge crowd here, but uh, that's right. we got to need one more qualifier. And from the list of bowlers here, any one of them is a, a great addition. All right, we have five bowlers set to go the next four weeks. One of those will survive to qualify for the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Let's meet our first two qualifiers, the guys you'll see in this match today. First of all, our number five seed from Framingham, Massachusetts, Paul Willits. After a long, uh, long wait to come back, Paul's back with us again, averaging 121, high single 195, his roll-off score 665. And as you mentioned, Paul has been waiting quite some time to return here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. His last appearance in December of 1991. And he will face our number four seed, making his first appearance here in singles competition on the wins from Pelham, New Hampshire, Ed Jerolman. Okay, and Ed comes in averaging 120, high single 186, and his roll-off score, four pins better than Paul at 669. All right, a little bit later on, we will have our bonus ball contest, as always, $40 available at the end of this week's show. Of course, there's prize money on the line for these bowlers, and there is also bonus money on the line, and we'll tell you about that and get the match started. Paul Willits and Ed Jerolman are set to go, and we'll be back to bring it to you right after these messages. <laughs> All right, here are the five bowlers that are coming up in these four weeks here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We already told you about Paul Willits and Ed Jerolman for today. The winner will move on to face number three seed Bob Kaliri next Sunday. By the way, we have a reminder about next Sunday's show in a minute. Our number two seed, Gary Carrington, with a 677. And then Jack Ray, our number one seed, with a 690 will be trying to defend that spot three weeks from today. So one of these five bowlers will join the five bowlers that have already qualified for the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Here's Paul Willits, and we are ready to go. I'm going to remind you several times during the hour, but uh, next Sunday, Candlepin Stars and Strikes will air at 11 a.m. That's next Sunday only because of WNDS coverage of the Arthritis Telethon. So you'll want to mark that down on your calendar next Sunday only here on the Winds. Candlepin Stars and Strikes at 11 a.m. And the seven box for Paul Willits. Paul from Framingham, Mass. December of 1991 was the only other time that Paul was here on Stars and Strikes, and he lost a match to Glenn LeBlanc, who threw a 451 on him. And Paul gets that oh, yes. first mark. He had to wait, but he got it. So he bounces back from that first box with his first mark. Just a matter of would that wood have enough momentum to knock the five pin over. And it looked a little easier there than it did when it went down the first time. Now Ed Jerolman. Ed's been with us in doubles competition uh, quite a bit, but this is his first appearance on singles. And he'll shoot at the three and four. Two and four, I should say. Ed's got his bowling face on. See, so yeah, he's all business up there. <laughs> and he's got the spare. And it works. A little later on in the hour, we'll refresh your memory as to the five bowlers who've already qualified for the seventh annual, do you believe it? The seventh annual Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. 
Ed on his spare, watch out. Slipping off to the left. Taking out, uh, let me see, just that four pin on the spare. Good recovery here though, right back in the pocket. Let's see. Still shoot at the two, seven, and eight. And the 10 box, but only 21 for the two in spite of the spare. Now Paul Willits will see if he can fare a little better on his. Bonus ball coming up on his spare in the second. And he'll have a half a dozen. Four horsemen right. One, three, six, and ten. Outside. Too full. After waiting for four years to come back, uh, Paul has done a lot of damage here early in 1995. He recently qualified for uh, Candlepin Skins as well, so you'll be seeing him uh, over at the Londonderry Bowling Center on a Saturday afternoon within the next few weeks. Paul back on the head pin. Two, four, six, a piece, couple pieces of wood behind the six pin. And a nine. 42 after four. Oh, big first ball for Ed Jerolman, leaving the kingpin. He's got a piece of wood in each channel, five pins standing. The rest of them were all knocked into the pit area. Good first ball by Ed for the spare. Yep. Big improvement on the spare fill last time for Ed, but still not much to shoot at. Seven. He leaves, though, the four, five, and seven. A couple pieces of wood. One directly in front of the four, seven. Another piece of wood looking right at him. Almost where the two pieces of wood meet. Probably have to catch a little more of the cap on the one looking at him to cover the five. Oh, he's going way left. Mm, not quite. No. And he'll take it for the 10. So a six pin lead for Ed Jeroman after the first four boxes here. Quick reminder that we're moving ever closer to our first ever presentation of the semifinal and final rounds of the 1995 New Hampshire State Candlepin Bowling Tournament. That will begin on Saturday, May the 6th, here on the Winds. Saturday at noon for four consecutive weeks, starting on May the 6th. The semifinals and finals of the men's and women's Open State Championship. Should mention that's the final, semis and finals of the all events. Right. Men's State Championship. And and women. Right. A lot of bowling just to qualify to get. You talk about, we talk about all the time what the bowlers have to do to get here to qualify for our show, but to get to the uh, state semifinals, each bowler will have to compete 21 games in all events competition in the five different disciplines singles, doubles, mixed doubles, mixed teams, and teams. And then they'll have to go through a three game quarterfinal match and win that in order to get to the semifinals. So 24 right. games before you get to television. And then of course you have to roll six more to win the whole thing. 
two open boxes for Paul Willett, so a chance for Ed Jeroleman to add to his lead here, but we'll shoot at the four horsemen. Four horsemen left, one, two, four, and seven. Piece of wood behind the one and the two, which always is a help. Keeps the one and two pins in play a little longer for you. Gives you some help on four, seven. Yes. And you would have made that without the wood. That's three marks in a row for Ed Jeroleman, but unfortunately for Ed, it's three in a row on lane 32. No bonus money for that. You see him splitting the one, two. Just catches the head pin. The domino effect for the rest of them. And the spare. And now the fill on lane 31. In the pocket. And, although it looked a little light, how about the carry? Well, just the king pin again. Five pin. Big nine fill on the spare. Chance to go two in a row and set himself up for some bonus money. He's got it. First mark for Ed on lane 31. His fourth mark overall. And his lead is going to be into the 20s when he fills that spare. Paul Willits right through the center. Paul and his wife uh, Leslie have four children, Patrick, Lori, Stacy, and Anne Marie. Paul works as a fifth grade teacher in Holliston, Massachusetts. Nine bucks. Just sliding by, missing the headpin just to the right. <laughs> but he may have a better leave than he had last time. All right. The <laughs> one, two, nine, and ten. A couple pieces of wood. Got a shot. Boy, I didn't never touch the nine or the ten. It's an eight. And two more open boxes. So a chance for bonus money here for Ed Jeroleman. $25 for three marks in a row. 25 more for each additional consecutive mark. $250 for three strikes in a row with $250 extra for every additional consecutive strike. The bonus money provided by Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Route 97, Main Street, Salem, New Hampshire. Come to Salem and save. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan, and Ed will have to convert this to get the $25. Four horsemen plus the eight pin piece of wood behind the one and the three. Nope. And it's a nine. 91 through seven. Ed Jeroleman and his wife Gloria live in Pelham, New Hampshire. Man, let's see. He spun that head pin right around and off that spot. It's a little bit to the right of where it normally sits. One, seven, and eight. I mean, one, eight, and nine, I should say. And a piece of wood behind the head pin, which should help. Oh, he just missed the head pin. Ooh, he almost got it with the wood coming off the left sidewall. Yeah, it's a 10. Well, that keeps the lead at 25. And Paul Willett's looking for his second mark of the match. And he's got it. Not a great first ball, but he took advantage of it. Here you see it right there. Ball quickly for the yeah. fill on the head pin again and the diamond. 
three, four, five, and eight. Uh, two, four, five, and eight. Got a chance, so. Oh. oh, that would have helped. Roman will have the lead after game one. Oh. It's a question of how many, and how about that break right there? He almost had the one and the nine. Now it's just the nine pin. It is pretty sharp on single pins. There's a 111 through nine plus the bonus ball. And a full box to come, so he's going to have the lead, just a matter of how many. He's marked four out of five times over there on lane 32. Now on lane 31. Just catching the head pin, getting a pretty nice mix for seven. Chance for another spare with all the wood lying around. Seven, eight, ten. It's going to utilize every piece of it, though. And unfortunately, they're not together. The ball's going to fly if he hits that front. He's missing the front one. Not much of a chance without catching some of that front piece of wood for the 10 pin. And a 10 box for Ed. A 128. And Ed Jerome has a 26 pin lead after game one here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We'll be back in a minute. Well, we told you five bowlers have already qualified for the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Here they are, Paul Berger, the number one seed as of the moment with a 454. Paul will be making his seventh appearance in the Tournament of Champions. He's been in every one. Tom Morgan wins the tiebreaker at that 397 spot over Jack Quinn, the 150 high single in Tom Morgan's uh, championship series, the difference in the tiebreaker over Jack Quinn, if you were wondering. Chris Sargent, the only other bowler so far to qualify with a 400 series. Tom Morgan, by the way, will be making his third appearance in the Tournament of Champions. The other three guys, Chris Sargent, Jack Quinn, and John Plant, will all be making their first appearance with us in the uh, postseason, if you will. And uh, one guy from this series will also join that group of five and the Tournament of Champions is just four weeks away. It begins on Sunday, April the 23rd, here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. It's going to be very exciting this year, Dan. We're going to have the uh, Tournament of Champions going on. We're going to have the state championship going on at the same time. Uh, starts a little later, but... It's going to be a fun May here on the winds with... Maybe a little baseball thrown in. Ooh. <laughs> well, open frame to start off the second game by Ed Drollman. Just what the doctor ordered for Paul Willits. Finds himself down 26 coming into the second game. But lots of time. Ed pull that one to the right for the half Worcester. And it'll be another eight. So a pair of eights for Ed Jerome, and then a golden opportunity here for Paul Willits. <laughs> Not for a minute, he was going to have to shoot another no, diamond sure. leaf. <laughs> the last three or four boxes, he looked, looked like he was throwing the ball a little more authority in that one as well. 
Let's see. Yes. Air up in the first. Mark number three for Paul. You see the triangle? No problem at all. Hit it full, but the wood would help them probably back. Probably helped, yep. Missed again, miss, missing to the right. Gets half a dozen. One, two, seven, and ten left. Let's see if we can make it two in a row. Got a shot at it. Oh, yes. yes. Great shot. Well, that will cut into the lead significantly. He's already taken 10 pins off, plus he has a fill coming. The 1, 2, 7, and 10. Would have made it without the wood. Ed Jerolman. Drop that one. Drop that ball a little early. Talking about uh, a lot of the special programming we have coming up to wrap up the season here on the wins. We mentioned the uh, Tournament of Champions, of course, and the state championship for the men and the women. We have one other little special presentation we want to tell you about. Those of us who are, uh, those of you who are regular viewers here on Sundays, if you uh, missed one of our best matches, not only of this season, but of any season, which aired on Christmas Day, We realized that there might have been one or two other things you had to worry about that day. <laughs> you might have missed the program. We're going to re-air that show from Christmas Day between Paul Berger and Glenn Shattuck, but we're going to re-air it on oh, Saturday. Oh, great shot there. Ed Jeroleman converts the half Worcester for a spare. Big shot. His first mark here in game two. Really needed that, too, because he was open three in a row and looked like he was going to go his fourth box without a mark in the second game. As I started to say, first of all, Paul Willett's going on, going for bonus money here, working on his second mark in a row, and he's gonna have a shot at three in a row. And he has already taken 18 pins off the lead. Got it, $25 in bonus money for Paul Willett's from Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. And he's not done yet. He's throwing the ball with a little authority now. Has a chance to take the lead in the match with a big fill here. He's opposite a spare, though, by Ed Jerome. Now he's going to have a shot at another one. That time he just caught the head pin, leaves himself the 2 4 7. Piece of wood out in front. It looks to me, uh, if he has a problem, it be the 7, but he should just drive it right straight back. Oh, no. Well, that'll cost yeah. him 25. I thought that might be a problem, but I still thought he would. Cover. We will pause right here and guess what? This match is just about dead even. Paul Willits at 61 through four has made up that 26 pin deficit. Ed Jerome is working on a mark though when we come back. Whatever Ed Jeroleman puts up on this spare fill will be his new lead. That old 26-pin lead is gone. <laughs> Back and forth we're going to go the rest of the match, I'm sure. Oh, he kind of slipped at the approach that time at the foul line, but got a decent break missing the head pin. One in the eight left, eight-pin drop on the spare, and as Doug said, an eight-pin lead now through 14 boxes. For the spare, no. Well, as I started to say before we went to the break and all the spares started happening. <laughs> for those of you who missed our Christmas Day show, Paul Berger against Glenn Shattuck, it was just a terrific match, and we want you to have another chance to see it here during the season. So we're going to air it on Saturday, April the 29th at noon. Saturday, April the 29th at noon. Yeah, write that date down. That'll be, the, that uh, that'll be the Saturday before the state tournament begins. Well, Ed gets another eight-pin drop, but this time 
It's the 6 and the 10. 4 and the 10. I got my pin squared away this morning. Jeez. <laughs> Couple pieces of wood. If he can get by that front piece, he may cover this. Nope. Oh, came back to get the four, but the ten is still there. So Ed filled with an eight to reestablish the lead, but he'll have two open boxes, and so an opportunity for Paul Willits to keep it going here. He's had three marks in a row already in game two. I heard the applause there, and it's not that they were applauding him for missing the spare. I think the people to our Right, thought he had made the shot. They couldn't see the, <laughs> the ten pin. This is a huge crowd here. It really is. Well, the crowds get bigger, you know, as we move toward the Tournament of Champions. It really does, yeah. Oh, right back in the pocket, and oh my. I was going to say, that oh. has to go. That was a great <laughs> ball. <laughs> Six and ten, and watch out for this one now because you get the wood in between. That sixman could fly right around the ten. Let's see. No, he covered it. Well, Paul has certainly turned things around here in game two. He had a 102 to start. Four marks and five boxes here to start the second game. Well, he needs an eight, eight fill to tie the match back up again. Oh. Big shot. That's eight. First strike of the day for either bowler, and Paul Willits takes the lead in the match. It's a totally different person bowling the second game than the first one. That ball was thrown with some authority. He said he needed eight. Well, he got all of eight plus the two more for the strike, and it sets himself up for bonus money. Meanwhile, Ed's gone the other way, and it seemed to be struggling a little bit to hit the object pin. One, two, and ten left for him. Piece of wood way in the back, but I don't think it's going to come into play. On the head pin, but too full. And Ed will take his nine box. A little drought here for Ed Jerome, and just one mark in the second game. Came back in the fourth. He hasn't marked on... Uh, Lane 32 in this game, and he had four marks over there in the first. Meanwhile, Paul Willits is marked in every frame except the fourth in the second game. Well, let's see. Ed gets a break and there. It's not a bad break at all, really. One, three, six, and then the eight pin in the back, but there's a piece of wood in front of the eight. First order of business, so you've got to have the head pin. Oh, yeah. Makes the shot. That's a big confidence booster there for Ed Jerome. His seventh mark, all spares. And the ball went right down to get the eight pin. Well, Paul Willits needs another mark for another $25 in bonus money. Well, he's going to be shooting at that diamond again. Three, five, six, and nine. Oh, yes! Oh. Oh. Very cleanly made for $25 in bonus money for Paul Willits. Wow. He made that look easy. He did. Yes, sir. -y. The two pin, or rather the three pin, carrying straight back to take the nine. Right Fall on the head, head pin again. Right. Well, this time it's four, seven, ten. The way he's bowling, watch him. He probably snap this wood off the wall in front of the 4-7, come across, <laughs> leave the 4, get the 10, come back for the 4. Paul, you weren't listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that'll be an 8. 126 through 8 for Paul Willits. Remember, he had a 102 opening game. He's making them count. Get them in bunches. Let's see, start off with the three spares in a row, and then an open, and then a spare strike spare. So. Ed Jerome and now finding himself trailing by 18 pins, but he can cut into that deficit with this fill. Five. <laughs> nope, hold that one. 
wanted to be sure he caught a little of the head pin plus the nine and ended up getting just the nine. And he'll take a nine. 96 through nine. Really needs to put a mark up here. Got to cut the lead down into single numbers. In the pocket, not much of a carry there. But possibilities, six, nine, six, eight, nine, ten. Play the triangle. Hope you can catch some of that wood and slide everything from right to left. You see what Paul is looking at? Nice and his shot. reaction as the spare goes in the 10th. Not much of a reaction, actually. It looked like he was just pretty confident he was going to get right. that. That's I mean, right. It's oh hum. Oh hum. Another, another spare. That could be a big spare, too. 106. Plus this ball, back on the head pin. Oh, Ed thought he was gonna punch out. He winds up with a nine fill and a 115. So a two game total, 243 for Ed Jeroman. I think Ed might have been expecting the spread eagle on I know, ball. that was a little full, but he got a good mixing action in the ball. 243, Paul Willits is at 228 right now with two frames to go. Well, let's see. The two, the six, and the ten. And it looks like the wood is going to be up against the six pin. Yep. Well, you can snap the wood on the left, have it come back, or try to cut the two pin. Actually, that wood started moving again yeah. right as Paul yeah. started his shot. I don't know if that distracted him at all, but... It'll go as a ten box. Paul only needs six pins in this box to maintain his lead. There's four. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right, Dan. I think this one's going to stay close the rest yes. of the way. It's going to be a single-digit lead going to the third and final game. Big, big second string for Paul Willits. He had six marks, clustering them in groups of three. A 145 for Paul Willits, 247 after two, and the difference is four with one game to go here on Stars and Strikes. Hey, remember, we have our bonus ball contest coming up at the end of the hour. We'll give you the address that you should send your postcards in so that you can get in on the winning. When we come back, don't go away. Paul Willits with a four pin lead. Coming back from 26 down after the first game and a big first ball again. Paul has just completely turned it around here. Well, we know Paul can put the big scores up. He had a 665 in the roll off and that was only good enough for fifth. That's been good enough to win That's some right. roll offs. Yeah, a lot of people ask me, what, what, if you give me a hint, what? What should I do when oh. I get on the show? And I, I, th I tell everyone the first thing, you, you gotta be aggressive on the lanes. A lot of people, they get a little gun shy up there and they, instead of throwing the ball, they kind of place the ball and it, it just ruins their timing. And I think that's what happened to Paul the first game. And then he just started to rear back and start throwing the ball like he normally does. By the way, the roll off for this series here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes says Paul with another big bomb of a first ball. But this time, he's going to leave the five and the seven. The wood may help him out. Let's yeah. see. Problem is a double piece. It always deadens everything. Oh, no, no. Well, as I started to say, Dan, and I'm sure you'd finish it if I didn't, the roll-off for this series <laughs> held at Boutwell's Bowling Center in Concord, New Hampshire. That's a nine box for Paul Willits. I'm sorry, I missed that. Where was it held? You heard me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. That's Dan's place, of course. Uh, 
you don't know the standing joke by now if you're new to the program. So when you go into Boutwell's Bowling Center up in Concord, just go in and ask for Dan. And if you happen to get there on, what is it, Wednesday, you'll be there? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 7-10 for Ed. Now it looks like the wood is in a great angle right now. Great position to have the, especially with the left hand, the ball's going away from the, the wood towards the 10 pin anyways. Oh boy, missed it. Nope. I can't, well, maybe he was playing that one. I Don't forget, next Sunday on uh, Candlepin Stars and Strikes, special starting time, 11 a.m. next Sunday, April the 2nd. That's to uh, accommodate the 1995 Arthritis Foundation Telethon, which will be held here on the Winds of New England, starting at noon next Sunday. So we will move bowling back an hour to 11 a.m. just for next week only. Ed on the head pin, back door, and leaves the three. Got it for the spare. He's not missed those single pins today. Oh, he's been right on every single pin he's had. That is nine marks for Ed Jerolman, all of them spares. Paul Willits has eight marks. He's thrown one strike. Paul also has $50 in bonus money so far. Four horsemen right. No wood to help. He's going to do this all by himself. One, three, six, and ten. Everything but the 10. It'll go as a nine. Right, Paul Willis trying to protect that four pin advantage. Don't forget though, Ed Jerome has a spare posted in the second. Boy, Paul just clipped the head pin that time. And then he just missed taking out the 10 pin. Of course, he's also got the 7 and 8, which are going to be a problem. I was going to say, I, I think if anyone's going to stay up because of the 7 and 8, you want them all to stay up. Oh, that close. Nope. For the 10? Yes. But no marks here in the early going of game three for Paul Willits. And Ed Jerome may very well take the lead here. As he's got the spare working. Through the center and this time he does get the tough leave. But he does take the lead also with that six fill. Well, let's see where this wood settles down. The further it comes out, probably the better it's going to be for him. Well, Ed will wait it out because... He's got a shot at this. Yep, that's going to yeah. stay right there. He's got to worry about the ball flying. I don't know what he's looking at. <laughs> you got to play the red line and hope the ball doesn't take off over the four and seven. Because there is no second piece, so... Ed doesn't throw the ball particularly hard. No. That may help him here. You're right. Oh, he's too high. Nope. No, need to be around the red line. Ten. So Ed has a three pin lead in the match right now. He's opposite a ten box. The runner up today receives fifth place prize money of a hundred dollars. The winner, of course, comes back next week to face Bob Kaliri, our number three seed. Ed is through the middle again. Ouch. Ouch indeed. <laughs> He's got uh, seven pins standing and two laying down. There's only one pin in the pit. <laughs> Boy, that came very close to being a good shot. He just missed the three pin on the way by. And chances of probably losing a few in count. This match is going to be extremely close with six frames remaining. 
Oh, nice nine right there to preserve his lead. Six boxes to go. Ed Jeroman has a two-pin lead in the match. We'll come back to settle this thing after this timeout. All right, Paul Willits, ready to go. We come down the stretch here on Stars and Strikes. And he punches through the center. 3-6-10 in the right and the four pin. Piece of wood now nestling in against the four, which should help. No, not quite. box. You get the feeling that the first guy to put a couple of marks together may win this thing. That's right. Tough piece of wood and uh, oh, maybe be able to get by it. No. Ooh, almost. So, two open frames. And Ed Jeroman with a chance to add to the lead. Two yeah. ten boxes, though, important for Paul Willits to at least get the tens. Sure, with there's only a two pin, two pin different in the match. That third ball is so very important. He's only left two pins standing this entire third game. Well, Ed at least has something to shoot at here. Nine, that cuts the lead to one. <laughs> well, the scores aren't gonna be extremely high, but you can't ask for it much, be much closer than this. One pin now. Half whist to right for Ed Jeroman. could take over the lead here without the benefit of a mark. Needs three of these to keep a tie. Oh, none. So, Paul Willits retakes the lead by three. With four boxes to go. One strike in the whole match. Off the ball of Paul Willits. And there's That's another second one. one. <laughs> How did you know that? Well, I just flashed the graphic up on the screen and I kind of cheated and I <laughs> read it. <laughs> Brooklyn hit. Stubborn 10 pin, but 9 pin falls into that. Looking for the double strike, which would really put some pressure on Ed Jerolman. That's not going to happen, but. What do you do? Do you try to snap the six pin across or do you take the nine fill and shoot for the two? It's gonna take the nine fill. Ooh, almost got it all the way over there. Let's see what happens if he clips this wood though. See if it'll snap off the wall. No, no. This was, well, I don't know, a piece <laughs> of wood came back. That was the six pin I think that came yeah. down on the other side. But probably the safe play to go for the big I, fill. Uh, yeah, at this point. I think so. Yes, because he had a three-pin advantage too. With a nine fill, gives him a, a double-digit lead, which is two marks for Ed Jerolman. And Ed pulls that one. Yeah, it looks really looks like he's pushing the ball. It doesn't it seem like it's coming out of his his hand real smooth. Almost like he's palming it. Oh, 
everything but the head pin. Cardinal Sin, you got to have that head pin. Not with that first ball, definitely with the second. Ten. But the Willets lead is now 12. This would be a great spot for Ed to put a mark up opposite the open frame going into the final two. Yeah, if he puts a mark up, then regardless of what Paul does, he'll still have a chance to win the match. In the pocket. Good first ball there by Ed Jerolman, and he's got the spare leave on the two and the four. And you can't in this situation be thinking anything but two pin. You have to have the two pin. Well, a little margin for error there, and he That's used right. it. Big spare, his tenth. Like I said, you have to have the two pin. Missed the two pin, chances are reduced greatly of making the shot. Comes off the wall for the spare. Did what he had to do. Now it's up to Paul Willits. And big carry right there, leaving the 10. Don't forget, next Sunday only, Candlepin Stars and Strikes airs at 11 a.m. here on the Winds as we make room for the Arthritis Ooh. Telethon. Ooh, and a miss on the single. Next Sunday at 11 a.m., Candlepin Stars and Strikes, just for the one week. And it's still there, a nine box. Yep. You just got to forget about that one now and bear down, get a mark here. Force Edge Roman to throw at least one more mark. With a pretty good first ball, triangle. I'll have a triangle shot at the 4 7 8. No. Nope. Well, left the door wide open. Let's see if uh, Edge Roman can take advantage of it. Ed will need another mark, however, because he was trailing by 12. So he will need another mark in order to win. A 105 for Paul Willits, 352. On the spare, Ed takes six. And he's going to shoot at the 3, 6, 10 and the 8 pin and a piece of wood directly in front of the 3 and 6. Obviously, I think the problem pin is going to be the 8. Oh, boy. Watch out. Oh, wow. Watch out. Well, that really, it cost him in terms of that shot, but he still, need, he still can win this thing with a mark in the 10th. And there it was. It'll go as a 10 box. Now he needs a mark in the 10th. A 10 box and he'd lose by four. So Ed Jerome needs a mark here in the 10th. Who said this was going to come down in the final <laughs> box? Both bowlers missing opportunities along the way, too. You know, this is way off to the left. Must have this. Has a shot at it. No. Paul Willits will advance by the narrowest of margins. It'll be a 10 for Ed Jeroman. He also counters with a 105, but it's not enough. 348 for Ed Jeroman. 352, enough to win by four for Paul Willits. We'll be back. We're running a little late. We're going to get right to our bonus ball contest. Paul Willits is set to throw it. We've got $40 in the jackpot. Also a couple of uh, sets of brand new bowling balls on the line if we get a match. And let's see. It will be seven for Paul, so it's all up to Dan now. Paul Willits has done his job. And it is a match for Phyllis Brown. No relation, I might point out. <laughs> Phyllis Brown of Seabrook, New Hampshire. Congratulations, Phyllis, and you can take care of me later, all right? No, just kidding. 
Uh, we do have a winner. And uh, so Paul and Phyllis will each be receiving a brand new set of bonus uh, uh, bowling balls, and Phyllis will receive $40 in cash. We'll empty the barrel and start all fresh next week. Don't forget, 11 a.m. next Sunday only here on Stars and Strikes as we make way for the Arthritis Telethon. And don't forget, of course, Candlepin Skins Saturday at noon. Until then, for everybody here at the Winds, I'm Doug Brown. Have a good week, everybody.